Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. And today's project is a very special one. It's uh, special because the reel belongs to a first responder. It belongs to a CAT scan uh, technician up in Massachusetts. Uh, they were kind enough to send this to me and said that uh, they would like to very much uh, make sure that this uh, reel was tuned up and ready to go for the upcoming season to give them some relief. I give her some relief off the uh, the day-to-day -day grind that's going on. And of course, if you are a CAT scan uh, professional, then you're probably taking an awful lot of uh, of those scans for COVID patients, which I understand uh, she does. So we're going to uh, we're going to show you how to take this uh, apart. This is the black-sided uh, 140 pen squitter, and uh, we're going to show you how to take it apart. This is an older one. It's got the uh, the etched side plate in it, so I'm going to estimate this one probably somewhere in the uh, the 1950s. Got a couple ugly screws here. We'll see if we can get those uh, corrected as we do this. And we're going to clean it up. Now, in order to clean it up, I'm going to start with a um, a metal pre-cleaner. It's by Flitz. I've I've showed it a little bit of this before. This one really does a lot of goodness in terms of cleaning out all kinds of stuff, but very particular salt water buildup, hard water stains, tarnish, grease and oil and the like. Now I've learned from experience with this product and by talking to the product manager that you want to uh, you want to get in and get out with this. You spray it down, you give it about 30 seconds at max and then you, uh, you come back in and you rinse it off with water. So let's get started then. We're back from the initial pre-clean. There's still a lot of dirt on it. We'll get to that as we work on the reel. We're going to remove the side plate now by unscrewing the single screw take apart system. And then just a brief turn backwards. We have a problem here right away. This uh, spool is kind of stuck in that, uh, stuck with that gear. Now, if you find yourself in that situation, do not try to just keep pulling on the spool. Something is going to break. So let's show you how to do that as part of this service. We're going to start by taking off the handle side and everything that's basically in it. If you uh, if you did pull on that, chances are you are going to bend the yoke or you're going to break the spool or some other uh, complication will arise from that. So please do not uh, do that if you find yourself in that situation. I take the screw off, then I back off the star adjuster to pull the handle off. I just find it's easier than just trying to kind of work it off the gear sleeve. And you can see we got a little bit of dirt and grease and grime in there, so we're going to do some house cleaning. All right, here's what you do now. You want to make sure that your your uh, yoke is, uh, is in the up position, your jack. Then we're going to take the four screws out of the side plate here and we're going to remove the eccentric lever. Right. So this is going to be a complete rebuild of this reel is what's going to happen here. But uh, that's okay. Uh, they're doing the rebuild of lives with these first responders and uh, the CT scan technician is right in the middle of all of that. So we're going to make sure that this gets the appropriate treatment and that uh, it all gets taken care of. We want to remove the lever now. I just have this kind of set up because I do this a lot. I believe that's an 8 millimeter. There we go. I'll show you how to put the eccentric and the spring and everything back as part of this service. I'm going to pull this out because that's still holding a piece that won't allow you to get everything out. So make sure it gets pushed through. And then, generally speaking, you should be able to remove everything now. There we go. So we've removed everything. We can find that there's a lot of dirt and grease and junk in there. We remove this up, and then we're going to find out what the issue is here with the spool. So that should be coming off there. I'm not quite sure why it isn't. Okay, just keep working it. And eventually it will come off. Now, I, I just did it behind the scenes because I didn't want to just tie everybody's time up. But there was broken line that was trapped inside the spool gear. So that's why that one wasn't working. And it was just it was just force. Just keep pulling it. And uh, eventually you will get that. Let's take the time to clean this. That's a plastic spool. So 
Some people think that because the, the reel with the plastic spool was a dollar cheaper 50 years ago, that it that meant that it was a, just an economy reel. It really wasn't the case with the, the squitter. The squitter had two functions to it. One of them would be surf casting, as you see by the, the etching on the side plate. And um, the other was kind of drop fishing. And the plastic or Bakelite spool or whatever this is, is made of, somebody will tell me. Uh, that was there to enable you to cast further because the weight was less and you had less resistance then as you were throwing the line. The metal spools were made for, uh, for the bottom fishing so that uh, when you got to them you could uh, you can hold the additional um, weights uh, that you were drop fishing with and you could also find yourself in a situation where if you did snag up you weren't going to break that spool. All right, it's cleaning time, right? We've got a whole bunch of pieces and parts here. The reel hasn't been serviced in a long time. We've got some issues here with the, the uh, bad screws. Let's go get those out of the way. Now, if you, uh, if you don't have the right screw, I don't recommend the, the wrong screw. Uh, that kind of just makes sense by itself, right? But uh, I think what you find with the wrong screw is you're going to strip a screw hole somewhere and uh, that becomes problematic. Well, we'll see, I got the right screws, we'll see if that becomes an issue. This is heavily um, tarnished, so I'm just gonna take the, the side plate, um, the wheel seat off, and we're gonna do some cleaning. Now, I, I hit the first part of this with the Flitz metal cleaner, and it uh, seems to loosen up a lot of stuff. The second part of this, we're gonna use steel wool, I'm going to use a chrome polish that's an automotive chrome polish to clean this reel. And there's one more screw here. So if you're wondering, the, the reel seat here fits the Pen Jigmaster. It also can be substituted for the Pen 155. And uh, overall, the, uh, the parts on this reel would, are, are very much interused with others. Let's take some steel wool. I'm going to use an automotive chrome polish. This one's by Turtle Wax. You can use any metal polish you want. Let's see if we can get that off. Well, we can get it off very quickly, right? Between that flitz that was uh, kind of a pre-soak and this chrome polish here. This thing is polishing up nicely and easily. So, there you go. But we're going to keep this steel wool pad in my hand. I'm going to go over and make sure that the star drag adjuster gets cleaned. I'm going to use a little Q-tip in the middle here, see if we can't just get the grease out of that, which we can. This one's going to look nice in the end. Come on to the inner ring. If you don't clean that grease up, that grease can try. And uh, if it dries up too badly, uh, it's going to lock that ring in place. And I do get questions all the time about um, folks that want to know how to clean that up. Well, one of the best ways to clean it up is to keep you real clean to begin with. And uh, that's what we're kind of showing you here. I've removed that. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to use penetrating oil to break up that dry grease inside and a Q-tip. That's usually a good start. I said Q-tip, that's the generic. This is the generic. It is not a Q-tip. Folks over at Johnson & Johnson will probably get concerned about or whoever makes q-tips so let's just say we're going to use a cotton swab just to keep everybody's brand identity correct here all right we've cleaned that out pretty good I cleaned up nicely just like the exterior did I did notice there's some more stuff in the, uh, the sleeve here so let's get that out of the way Sometimes it's good just to kind of ball up that uh, steel wall and just kind of use it as an auger almost. Work our way through there and see if we can't clean that up that way. That's better. And then we're going to use the pen rod and wheel cleaner. This is a rod and wheel cleaner and it does an excellent job of breaking down a lot of this exterior dirt and grease. I like it. And I use that with a kitchen scrubby pad. It's 
just slightly abrasive. It takes care of a lot of the other creases and, and dirt and the like that are in here. So this is a little bit more than normal in terms of what you would expect a problem on a reel, but it's good nonetheless, and I do uh, don't mind doing this one at all. As I mentioned, it's for a first responder, and I hope that she gets to enjoy it out on the water up in Massachusetts on some of her downtime. Her husband was kind enough to watch the video and send it in, so there you go. Okay, just cleaning up the rest of it. It's cleaning up nicely. And we can uh, kind of start the assembly of the reel. But there's one more issue I do need to address with this reel, and that's the drag stack. I noticed that we are well past the life expectancy of these drags. They're all pressed together, they're broken, and we will replace those as well. And then underneath here, you can see the same accumulated grease, and we want to clean that up. So we're going to remove the, the gear sleeve. You do that by pushing the pin out. I just use uh, a little awl here to do that, but I do have a punch if it was needed. Most of the time you can push it out with, uh, with a pointed object like this. Go ahead and grab the pin to pull it the rest of the way out of the pliers. That goes into my parts tray. The gear sleeve should pull off and you can see that that's why you want to pull it off. That channel is completely full of old grease. And that will bog down and will seize eventually if you don't clean it out. I'm just using a paper towel and a fingernail to clear those channels. And you can see all the grease and rust and the like hiding under that. So don't skip that step. Make sure that it, uh, uh, that you do that uh, part of the cleaning exercise. Okay, again, a little bit of uh, penetrating oil. We'll break that up. In this case, I'll just use a different uh, kitchen scrubby. That should be enough. You don't need a steel wool piece for that. I'll do that well. And then we'll just do two more, three more parts here. Then I'm going to pause the video, go get some, some drag washers. We'll show you how to rebuild the stack and finish the wheel. So, I'm cleaning up the yoke right now. It's the same idea. The, the pieces have been around forever, and uh, that's caused the problems here. Same thing with the jack. You'll see it on the back here. But overall, the reel is in pretty good condition, except for the wear and tear on the general parts and that line being caught in the, uh, in the, in the gear. One more to go here, and then we'll come back with the, the dry washers and we'll show you how to, to finish the rest of this assembly. So I stepped away, I did a little bit more cleaning, and I had to go get the, the drag washers, but this is how you tell that the dry washers are bad. They, they snap very easily, so there's nothing working in that. We also had the shield on the um, bottom of the gear which is going to be replaced that was bad and speaking of the gear we just want to do a little bit more cleaning on that before we we finish up and put that back so we know that we have a lot of dried grease in there I'm using a, a hard bristle brush just to pull that out I'm inspecting the teeth as we go along and I'm making sure that all of those uh, teeth are aligned properly and that there's nothing left in there so get rid of those old drag washers Clean up the gear teeth. I'm going to grab a brush, and I'm using Pen Precision Real Grease for this. Make sure that it gets lubed properly. Not because it's a pen reel, but because it's fishing reel grease. And uh, you need to use fishing reel grease. I get all kinds of questions from time to time about uh, the types of greases to use. And uh, Quite honestly, fishing wheel grease is available online and it's not that expensive. Please go ahead and use that. All right, we've, we've cleaned the inside of the uh, gear sleeve. We've moved that up. We're going to grab that pin to put that back on. Goes right back in the hole and is pushed through. 
If you have a little difficulty pushing, go ahead and use a pliers. In this case, I'm using a channel lock pliers. Just to kind of assist in pulling it in. I've had a lot of luck with that one. And then when you do that, make sure that it's all the way in on the side here. If it's not, you're not going to be able to get the gear on. It's that tight of tolerance. So just make sure it clears that ridge. And you can go ahead and put that hard stop washer on and put the, the main gear over it. Just a little bit of left over here. So let's get that out of the channel. And we're going to start with three new drag washers then. I get asked all the time, where can I get parts for the pen reels? Uh, a very dependable source is, is mysticparts.com. They're an authorized pen parts reseller. And uh, if you need the pen parts, by all means, go online and get them there. All right, I'm going to use dry grease so that these don't dry out. Now, all you do is a thin coating on that. You don't put a lot of grease onto that. I'm going to take the first of the round washers. They're called uh, keyed washers. They have an oblong internal set. I'm using Cal's Universal Dry Grease to, to get these properly lubed. The middle washer is called an eared washer because it kind of looks like ears on a smiley face. And then one more. And I just dip that into the grease and then I use my gloved hand to, to spread that grease around. If there's any excess, use a paper towel to wipe it off. You don't want too much in there. It'll only squeeze out when you're operating the reel. So I'm squeezing out. Looks like I have a a leftover tension washer from the wheel that just popped out there. I think that was probably stuck in my uh, my drag washers that I took it out. And that's that's your bridge. That's your bridge. So we're done with that. We did a little bit extra work here, right? We had to take that eccentric out. So I'll show, show you how to put that eccentric back in. This is the eccentric spring. This is the eccentric. We had to push that out so that we didn't damage anything on the way out. You want to put a little light coating of grease onto the shaft where it's going to go back into the case. Grab the spring. There's a hooked end of the spring which mounts from underneath. Just like that. And then you need to find the little kind of V in the side plate. Lock that bottom piece into that uh, indentation. Go ahead and press the other part in here. And most of the time on these, you can push these over. So you want to rotate it until it comes where the, the bar is, is clearing that little shoulder. And then you're able to get your lever onto the other side of it. And then that little lever screw. I just have trouble thinking it's a nut, but it's a screw. And then just work it in. Again, I think that's an 8 millimeter nut. And use your ratchet or use your wrench, either one, to tighten it down. And just make sure that it's doing what it should be doing, which it is. Okay, next up then is those two springs. Those go on each side. In those cavities. And we're going to take our yoke that we cleaned up, make sure that that gets the lubrication needed. And we're going to grab our spool or pinion gear. Now I checked this before when I was taking it off. You want to make sure it's the same thing that you did with the main gear, that all the teeth are uniform, that they're cleaned up. There's no chips or cracks or the like. Then you install that by centering the yoke over those springs, pushing down, and then taking the jack, sliding that under the tab in the eccentric, and that's essentially installed. To finish this then, you want to take the bridge that we just did, Push down again. You want to install the bridge upside down, basically, like that, to a 90 degree kind of a sit. You want to grab one of the 
fully threaded screws to the bottom like that and you want to take that anti-reverse dog now that anti-reverse dog has a spring sitting in it if you've lost the spring it goes in that cavity and that dog gets mounted over this here and that spring gets compressed behind that little metal stud just like that and you can complete the rotation and then you just want to do a turn or two on that screw there to make sure you're good before installing the other screws. The fully threaded screws go below. The partially threaded screws, you can see there's only a piece of that screw up top. That's because the non-threaded piece of that screw is actually the channel that those springs are riding on. And if you put a fully threaded screw in there, there is a chance that that spring will catch on the threads. So folks over at Penn did a nice job in designing that and we should be to the point where we can test the side plate make sure everything's working fine there which it is and then we need the gear sleeve which needs to be cleaned up a little bit I, all of the pieces that I did the cleaning on I didn't clean that sleeve so I'm going to use that steel wool just to wipe the outer piece of that now we can put our sleeve in. Now we can put our star adjuster on. Use the handle to tighten that down. Again, you can give it a twirl just to make sure everything's working fine, which it is. We've got to come back now and put the real seat on. I was missing one of the screws, if you recall. So let's go ahead and mount this. Now this is kind of easy to know where the screws go because the, uh, the short ones are the ones that are like a jig master. They're actually inside the case. So you need to line the screw on this one up. You can visually you can kind of turn it from the inside to make sure that it's done properly. You can also use a little centering pin. Most of the time if you're servicing the reel you wouldn't take this off but this was so dirty that uh, it, it warranted that. I did find replacement screws for those um, the wrong ones that were in there so we're going to use those. When you're doing this, understand that the side plate screws are two different sizes. One's short and one's long. Looks like we have a secondary screw in here that I didn't take out. But uh, we'll get this one through here. And this one kind of is suffering from what I was talking about. There's a cross strip on the front end of this, but the screw is long enough to get past that bad channel. So we're good there. I want to make sure that they're tight on the inside because a lot of times they will loosen especially if they have the wrong screw installed on that side and we can come over here and get these two small screws into the case here so if you like what you're seeing I'm going to ask you to subscribe and if you do subscribe please hit the notifications button that way you won't miss any of the episodes I post I post on all kinds of reels and uh, notifications will tell you which ones you may want to watch. And uh, if you like it, please indicate a like on the, the screen as well. All right, just finishing up on that screw then. Get close to the, uh, the moment of truth here. We're going to grease both sides of the spool. Especially since we had something caught there, we want to make sure that that's moved up well. Let's load this in. I should do them a favor. Maybe I will. I think I will. I'll probably pull this line off and place the line for them. Let's go ahead and set the side plate in. And you go. You want to make sure that that piece gets in there. Get our handle on. 
more of a cleaner here. try. So I hope you're enjoying it. I'm certainly enjoying giving back and working on the first responders reel. All right, tie down screw. We should call this complete. And so here's how the reel turned out then. Essentially we had to go ahead and replace the bearing on the side here and actually wound up replacing the side plate on this because the bearing was bad on both sides. We stripped the old line and put new line in. As you saw during the service it has the new drag washers and uh, everything else has been cleaned up. This reel's ready to go fishing again. So I only hope that uh, Lisa, who's the, uh, the CT scan professional, uh, has the time to do that with her husband, Bill. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you again to all first responders. Uh, this has been my pleasure to do this one. And again, if you like the video, please indicate that. If you have questions, please ask that in the comments. And if you uh, want to see more, please subscribe. And if you do subscribe, please hit the notifications. So this reel is ready to go fishing again. I hope they have the time to do that. This is with Dennis Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.